Number 97. Which of the following molecules and ions contain polar bonds? And which of these molecules and ions have dipole moments? And then we have XEF2. So xenon difluoride. Okay, so I guess we'll start off with the polar bonds. Does XEF2 have polar bonds or does it have nonpolar bonds? Well, in order to answer this question, we should see some type of bond, right? And a bond is just represented by your two elements that has either a single or a double bond between them, or a triple bond, right? But if I'm just looking at XEF2, I don't see any bonds, right? And I don't like to guess, so my suggestion to you is, with these types of questions, just take a minute and draw the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure will show you the actual bonds that you're dealing with. Now, there's tons of videos on this channel just designated to learning how to draw Lewis structures, where we go step by step, you could always check those out if you need to for more guidance. But for this one, uh, let's just, if you want to, pause the video, try to draw out the Lewis structure for XEF2, and see if yours matches mine. Okay, so I'm going to start. So fluorine, never a central atom, because fluorine is the most electronegative element. Xenon has to be in the middle, surrounded by the two fluorines. Yikes. That was not Christina approved. Eh, that's a good fluorine. <laughs> okay. So now, two fluorines done. Each one of these have to have a single bond. And then each fluorine has the six dots around it to get the octet. And then xenon um, had a... Xenon's a noble gas, so it has eight valence electrons. It used two to make that bond. So I have six left. So two four, six. Beautiful. Okay. Now I can clearly see the bonds, right? And in this case, it's a single bond from fluorine to xenon. And then on the other side, it's the same type of bond. It's a fluorine to xenon bond. So I'm just going to pull um, just the one bond because they're the same. And I'm going to say it's a fluorine to xenon bond. So when you're looking for polar bonds or nonpolar bonds, right, always just use your electronegativity differences, right? And the difference is just a fancy word for saying subtraction. So you're going to find those electronegativities, you're going to subtract them, and if your range is in between 0.4 and 1.8, you have polar bonds, which just means that there is a, um, not a 50-50 sharing down the middle between the, uh, the electrons in this bond. Maybe the electrons are more towards fluorine. Maybe they're more towards xenon. That's what a polar bond is all about. Now, on my electronegativity chart, I see that fluorine has an electronegativity of 4.0. So let's just write it under fluorine 4.0. And now I'm looking at my chart that I put here and uh-oh, I forgot to include xenon. Sorry, um, but it basically is right next to iodine, right? So um, as you're going from left to right, electronegativity should generally increase. So we know that xenon should be a little bit more than 2.5. And as I look at my periodic table, it is indeed a little bit more. It's 2.6. Now, when you're taking that electronegativity difference, just know that that difference is always going to be a positive number. You could, technically, you, you could technically take 4 minus 2.6 or 2.6 minus 4. One gives you a positive answer, the other one gives you a negative. Just know that your electronegativity difference is always the positive answer. So if you do get a negative, just make it the absolute value. Okay, so now I'm going to subtract my 4 from my 2.6, and it looks like I get a 1.4. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to box that off. Do we fit into the realm? Yes, we do. It's pretty polar, mainly because you're dealing with fluorine. Fluorine loves to have all the electrons to itself. <laughs> so this would for sure be a polar bond. Okay, so we got polar bonds for XEF2. But now, let's see. Does this molecule now have a dipole moment? And a dipole moment now brings the idea 
into a more generalized concept in which your whole molecule now is going to be polar. So we're looking past the bonds and we're going to see if we have symmetry or asymmetry um, with the whole entire molecule. And this is where SNAP comes in, S-N-A-P. Symmetrical are nonpolar molecules and asymmetrical are the polar molecules. And that's what has the dipole moment. Only polar molecules have dipole moments. Now, there's one quick trick to always get down because it's going to make it so much easier. Just know that if your central atom has um, lone electrons, so you're looking for the dots, it is automatically always, always, always going to be polar. And xenon, I mean, you got six dots, you got three pairs. I don't have to look any further. Anytime that that central atom has electrons, lone electrons, you know that it's polar. So this is a polar molecule, and because it's polar, we know that this has a dipole moment. There's an unequal sharing of electrons in the molecule. Dipole moment, and that's it. Let's box it off, and we are good to go. Uh, yeah, what'd you think? Thank you for tuning in. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and I, I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. I'm rooting for you for on your tests and quizzes, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.